Hello everyone, I'm back again, and this time I'm back with another God Guy video. And before we go any further, I'll talk about a few things. I know I've been gone for a little while. Um, I've been super busy. We finally moved into our new house. I also got sick, so I really didn't feel like making any videos. Just had a lot of things going on. But I'm back. And so the new site also realized is that with these God Guys, there's not really any way I'll be able to keep up to date on 70 gods soon to be 71 on xbox is already 71 on pc so i'm gonna stick to solo lane gods since that's what i play um so this is all gonna be solo lane guides for these gods um and also i'm gonna be releasing a new series i'm gonna post a couple videos along with this video just to see if y'all like it because i'll keep doing it then if not then you know forget about it. but Anyway, we're going to move on to Jane 10. Now, Jane 10 is definitely a top tier soul laner. Helm Bologna, in my personal opinion, are the top two soul laners in the game right now. They're both very powerful. There's not really that much of a way you could beat them in lane. You just have to hope that you don't feed them. So, with that being said, of course, there's a couple of gods that uh, can also just you know, sit in lane, do their thing, like Hades, Chalk, they don't really lose lane, they just kind of sit there, do their thing, they farm, they're, you know, they're fine. But you'll have a lot more impact late game than they will. So, Gen 10. Um, let's go over the build first. Most of the stuff is going to be what I use personally. Of course, I'll give some other options. As most of y'all know that play solo lane, there's not really a correct way to build um, each god in solo lane. It's kind of very dependent on the matchups and what the enemy team has. But I'll go with some of the items that I tend to favor. So, first off, for start items, um, I like to get Mark of the Vanguard. I think Mark of the Vanguard's a little bit better than um, Vampiric Shroud. You have a little trouble clearing early, a little bit. It's not really that bad. You, you're fine on your clear for the most part. But someone like, I don't know, Chalk or someone's going to out push you, more than likely. So, uh, Mark of the Vanguard will give you the little extra defense, help you uh, help you mitigate some of the damage that you'll probably take from the creeps, and just help you stay in lane longer. Then I like to get Boots 1, and I stock up on a bunch of potions. I like to get 4 health potions and 4 multi potions. Do not get 4 mana potions here. You want the uh, multi potions. You're going to get mana buff anyway. The multi potion is going to give you mana, and it's also going to give you health. And it does not stack with the health potion. So if you use the health potion and the multi potion, you get two ticks of health. So it's very good for that. Here you lost sustain. Potions are very, very important in the soul lane. You want to make sure you have a lot of sustain to stay in there to fight. So with that, we're going to move on. Um, for boost, you got two options. You can either do cooldown reduction boots or uh, penetration boots. I personally like the cooldown reduction boots a lot more. It also gives you that mana, which kind of neat because Jenten's kind of lacking a lot of mana early game. And it's very good for that. Plus, you get the extra cooldown reduction, which you'll want max cooldown on Ten. Then we're going to go Breastplate of Valor second. If you're going against a physical god in solo lane. If not, then you're going to get with the Stone of Gaia. Just depending on your matchup, you get one of these two first. Well, not first, but after boots. We're going to talk about Breastplate first real quick. Uh, breastplate is going to give you that 40% uh, cooldown along with your boots. So, you'll already be at max cooldown after two items. This is going to give you a lot of more, a lot of extra mana. So you should have no problem with your mana pool after you get this up. It's going to give you a lot of uh, physical defense also. This item is very, very good. And you'll just be causing havoc later in the game in team fights. And you'll also be very good at uh, boxing the enemy soul laner. I should get this up. And then if the enemy soul laner is a magical god, get stony guy. You can either go with tier two or tier three, your choice. Uh, Gen 10 has a lot of sustain, which we'll talk about when we get to his passive. And stony guy just gives you even more of that. You'll have a crazy amount of regeneration on Gen 10, and you won't really have to worry that much after that. So after you get one of those two items, I like to go to ethereal staff. It's going to give you a lot of health, even more mana, so you definitely won't have any mana problems. And it's going to give you some uh, nice damage. Uh, later on, I think around 2700 health is when Ethereal Staff uh, gives more damage than Warlock Sash or 
It's somewhere around that, I believe, from what I heard. So, in order that, you'd be better off with just E-Staff. Plus, you don't have to stack it. That's always nice. So, and then, for the fourth item, I like to get whatever one I did not take second. So, if there's a magical god, I would take press plate here, and if it's a physical god, I will take stone guy here. Now, you don't have to get stone and guy, though. You got some other options. If you don't feel like building stone and guy, I do. I think it gives. I think the sustain is really nice. If you're looking just for more damage, you can get a void stone. Void stone is going to give. Uh, it's going to reduce the enemy team's magical protection, so that's also good for your solo laner and your support. Assuming that they're also playing a guardian. Uh, the enemy team has a bunch of healing. You can grab a pestilence. Pestilence is very good. Your support also could be grabbing that. So just you know, ask your support if they're getting pestilence because they do not stack. So in that case, if you can build a pestilence second if they got a mage soul lane, like if they have a hell Aphrodite, something like that, pestilence would be pretty good against to deal with them. Also gives a pretty good bit of health, gives some magical defense, which is nice. If you're planning on getting Void Stone, I would probably just go ahead and get uh, Ethereal Staff second then. Because Void Stone doesn't offer a whole lot of protection. It offers a decent, a decent amount, but you're mostly getting it as more of a more of a more of a damage option for your tanky uh, characters, like Gen 10. It's definitely not a, a high defense priority item like Stone Geyer is. Um, with that said, though, you definitely can still build a second. The penetration is nice, but the wrong with that. I would just rather have the Ethereal Staff if you're going to get Void Stone instead of Stone Guy or something. Um, you can also build after. After these four items, it just really depends on the matchup. Um, if they have a nice mix of, like, if they have like a a Shibalank and a Zeus, I might go with the Height of the Urchin because that's a lot of sustained physical and magical damage. It's gonna be a lot of damage. Uh, Height of the Urchin is probably the best defensive item as far as stats go. It gives you a lot of really good stats, especially once you get it stacked up. You're gonna have a lot of magical and physical protection. A lot of extra health, a lot of extra mana. You're also already going to have an insane amount of health and mana in the first place, and this is just going to give you more, which is nice, plus the protections. Hyther is a very good item. Um, if they don't have a lot of sustained magic damage, like a Zeus or something like that, then you could definitely go um, Guardian Mail. This will also give you a lot of a lot more physical protection, gives you some more health. Of course, the slow from uh, them basic attacking you is nice. Speaking of slows, thanks for your one. Uh, jungle isolation is not bad on Gen 10. It's pretty good. Uh, they'll be slowed for a little bit with uh, with your one. You could also get Pythagoras piece. The main reason why you want to get this is for the aura on it because this will give your uh, your mid laner some extra damage, which is always nice. Uh, of course, Rod Tahuti is a great damage item, and so is Soul Reaver. Those are generally the items I like to go with. Now, if you do go pin boots first, you'll probably want to go ahead and get uh, f for your uh, max cooldown. You're still going to get max cooldown. Of course, get breastplate, and then you'll probably either want to get the guardian, not the guardian, uh, mail renewal or uh, spirit robes, depending on what the enemy team comp is. So those are generally the items I like to go with. I usually like to go with these four items, but the uh, probably the guardian. And I don't know one of these other damage items. I like to get a little bit of extra defense too. The little extra defense is nice, even with high urchin. And then as far as actives, um, teleport's very good. Of course, when you're playing solo, you definitely should be getting teleport. This is absolutely no reason not to get teleport. This will also help you, uh, you know, rotate. And if the enemy uh, soul laner is staying in your lane, you can just teleport back to your tower, although losing your tower in solo lane is not the worst thing ever, at least not your tier 1. Definitely don't lose your tier 2 though, that's never going to lose your tier 2. And then with Gen 10's um, ultimate, Blink is very good. I always just think of Gen 10 as an easier to play Ares. And with that, his ultimate caused a lot of havoc. People don't really seem to know to bite beads against him yet. For some reason. And speaking of beats, well, Beats is also another choice. They have a bunch of CC. 
you won't always need blink. You do have uh, two jumps on Gen 10, which is nice. But uh, I definitely say these two are the go-to. But blink's also useful. You could also do Shield of the Underworld. I wouldn't really suggest it, but you can. Uh, Shield of Absorption is decent on them too, and we can encourage that have a bunch of healing. But like I said, my two main suggestions would be teleport and blink. So with that, let's look at his abilities, and let's take a look at his passive first, and that is Smoldering Rage. Um, he gains a stack of Smoldering Rage for each time he hits an enemy with an ability. So um, hitting the enemy wave, the enemy menu wave with your one and your three, you know, you get a stack for each one that's hit. So that'd be six with your one. And if you use your three on them to hit the front and the back, then that's twelve, and then bam, you instantly got max stack. And with each stack, you get um, three H to HP five. So you get a bunch of extra uh, regeneration. That's gonna go up to um, uh, 36. 36 extra HP 5, along with, if you get like Stunner Guy, which is why I like to get Stunner Guy on them, you can have a crazy amount of regeneration. It's a crazy amount. That's like, you'll have like 70 or so HP 5, or maybe even up to 100. And that's without, that's not including the passive on um, Stunner Guy. It's crazy. You'll get a lot of health regeneration back to this. There's a very good ability, very powerful, especially in the lane. This helps you um, sustain a lane easily. It's a very good ability. And then, let's take a look at Furious Roar. I have a hard time saying ours. Furious Roar. Or something like that. I can't talk. Okay, leave me alone. Um, basically, he's just going to shout from his chest, which sounds, which, which sounds really freaking awesome. In all honesty. Um, it's going to do some damage to them, and it's also going to put a down on them that takes a percentage of their max health over time. This is very good. And the biggest thing you want to do with this ability, once team fights break out, is use this on Hunter, because this is going to reduce their damage by 50%. It's going to reduce their basic attack damage by 50%. That is a lot. That's basically going to screw over the enemy Hunter. You're going to have a good time. Your team's going to just gonna kill them, and you're going to win. This ability is insanely good. It's even good at lane. Pretty good for clearing the minion wave. And then we're going to take a look at Hook Slam. Now Hook Slam is a, it's a two part ability. The first one you're going to jump up in the air. Whoever you hit. It's going to kind of, uh, going to kind of knock them up in the air a little bit. And then when you slam back down the ground you're going to root them. It's pretty good. It's a pretty good CC ability. It does a decent amount of damage. And you know, it's a pretty good ability. And then we got Sky Cutting Axe. Now this ability is very good. It's very useful. It has a lot of, a lot of different uses. Um, while you're in the middle of the jump, you get extra protections. Which might not seem like a big deal, but it's actually pretty useful. It has saved me on many different occasions. Um, you also get two jumps. This is pretty good for clear, helping clear the wave, the menu wave early. It's pretty good for dealing damage. It's what you'll take, it's what you'll definitely want to level up if you're jungling. This is a very good ability. It's very good for jumping into the fight, jumping out of the fight. And then, well, this comes to um, the dilemma of what to level up first. There's definitely not really a wrong way to level up his abilities first, except for getting hook slam first. You don't want to get hook slam first. Uh, you can definitely either take your three or your one first. Like if you're jungling, which we're not really talking about, but you can do like three, one, two. Uh, generally in solo lane, you'll probably want to do one, three, two. That's what I like to do. Uh, you can still get away with doing three, one, two. You can do one, two, three. The, uh, your T is very good for harassing the enemy god, especially they're playing like Bologna and you can knock them out of bludgeon. That's very good for that. And uh, really, that's not really the wrong way to level up Mission 10's abilities. Just definitely do not take hook slam first. That's not the building you want to level up first. And then, um, we're going to take a look at his ultimate. His ultimate, you do a spin to win. Um, each enemy that you grab in your axe, will be, you will take along with you, and at the end of the duration, you will throw them. Now, for each, uh, each time that you spin around with the enemy in there, they're going to take additional damage. This ability is 
does deal a deceptive amount of damage. Does pretty good damage, even though you're just looking at these numbers right here, does not look like a lot of damage. Does a decent bit of damage. It's also a very good team fight ultimate. Very good for initiating with. They're gonna be really disoriented. There's also a very good ability to use to get rid of beads on enemy team, so your other teammates can use their abilities without fearing of having their abilities beads. This is a very powerful ability. This is why Agent 10 is just an easier version of Ares. And just a better version of Ares. Ares uh, Gen 10 could definitely carry a game. He can get to the point where he's just plain unkillable. So with that, that's going to be Gen 10. Gen 10 is a very powerful guard now. If you play solo lane, play Gen 10. You need to learn him, just like Bologna. You definitely need Bologna Gen 10 if you're going to play solo lane. So with that said, hope y'all enjoyed show on Gen 10. Um, if there's anything that I did not say that y'all like on Gen 10 or that I that y'all like to do, just like to give me any tips on Gen 10 to help everyone else up, that'd be great. Just uh, let me know what you guys think. I hope you guys liked the videos. Hope you guys have a great day and remember to have fun.